What is good, everybody? Welcome back to another Body of Toys video. Today, we're back with some brand new WWE action figure news for you guys. If you're unaware, Ringside Collectibles did post up some brand new action figure images yesterday, and they were pretty epic. I thought they were pretty good enough to cover here today, and I can't wait to dive into it with you. I think we got some good stuff, some in-between stuff, and a lot to talk about here. And also, all of this stuff is in stock. They said it was in stock now, so that's kind of mind-blowing. I did not expect it to come this fast. Hold up now. But here we are today, man. We got some brand new images, man. Let's dive into this first. We have the WWE Top Talents Wave coming very soon, and this is in stock now. This figure right here is a figure we knew about, but we did not know what gear it would be, man. We finally have the American Nightmare. Not the American Nightmare no more, Brad. It is the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes here in this really unique look. Now, a lot of people are talking about this figure and how inaccurate it is. Okay, inaccuracies aside, I don't, I, I don't think he's ever worn this like light bluish tealish color with this navy and gold. Don't think that was ever a thing. I do believe this is supposed to be silver or gray, if I'm not mistaken. But this figure looks badass. At least the colors do. You know what I mean? I think this looks really, really good. However, it's very confusing. Like, this is pretty much the third figure just like this that's repainted, right? We had the Elite 101. We had the Defining Moments Torn Pet Cody that we just reviewed this past week. And now we have this new Top Talents Cody, which is beautiful. I'm all for the Cody Rhodes figures. You guys know I love Cody. I love his figures. I think they're beautiful. This one looks astounding as well. However, I feel like the head sculpt looks weird, man. The head sculpt looks weird. The inaccuracy on the gear, just like the Ultimate Edition, inaccuracy in the color. It's just very odd. They keep making up these gears. They're like, he had honey mustard. It's like, no, Brad, that was gold. And then it was like, here's this, and I don't think... I haven't done, like, a ton of research on this gear specifically, so I couldn't tell you if this is actually inaccurate or not, like, fully factual, but everybody's telling me that this is inaccurate. I haven't dove into the details just yet, but apparently this is inaccurate, and I don't remember him off the cuff wearing this gear. I felt like I would remember him wearing this gear, but this is a sick figure nonetheless. Less. I still think it's cool to have like this kind of this this cool looking gear in a Cody figure. But the head sculpt looks weird, man. It's the same head sculpt as the Elite 101. It just looks like the deco's different. It doesn't look as good as the defining moments that we just took a look at. And I feel like his hair is a little bit too yellowish. And then the eyes look a bit weird. And they're still putting the, the tattoo on the jaw there. However, as you'll see later in this video, they've adjusted it on some other figures, which makes no sense whatsoever. So we'll, we'll dive into all that. But I like this figure a lot. Still the crummy weight belt. It's a top talents figure. So you're going to get a repaint of an existing figure. I think Cody Rhodes is an excellent choice. However, there are some weird things going in here. But I love this figure just for the simple fact of a Cody Elite that looks sick. Even if the gear ain't real, it still looks fire in figure form, Brad. And I'll, I'll take it all day. Diving into the rest of the Top Talents wave, man. This is very odd. And a lot of people were scratching their heads at this. We have Matt Riddle and Rey Mysterio. Now, I'm just going to pan back and forth between the two. Because these are just re-releases. Yeah, it's just a re-release. It's like we got greatest hits here coming in the top picks wave because you guys know for a long time they've always just repainted these figures. In these figures, they didn't repaint nothing. They just re-released the Elite 88 Rey Mysterio, right? The Elite 88 in that like Superman colorway. However, that figure did have single jointed arms. So we are getting double jointed arms here on this Rey Mysterio. It's the one with the eye patch. I think it was around like 2020. It was like shortly after the Extreme Rules match with Seth Rollins with the eye for an eye match. And then we have Matt Riddle here, which is just the Elite 99 Matt Riddle, which we literally just got, or at least feels like we just got. I don't even think this this figure's hit retail yet, so there is a possibility that you could see, well, I guess not technically true. The Top Talents figures are going to be a minute, so I guess, like, the Elite 99 is going to show up at retail for the this Matt Riddle here. Same accessories, same everything, and then as soon as those pan out and are out the door, the Top Talents is going to show up. It's going to be the exact same figure, so very odd choices here. I don't know why you couldn't do, like, the first Matt Riddle in Elite 78 that had, like, Kalisto arms. That would have been a much better deal and a figure that I think a lot of people would have wanted, and then Rey Mysterio... We have so many Rey Mysterios, why couldn't you just do a quick little repaint? Of course, I don't know the, like, we don't know the, all the behind the scenes and all the ins and outs and all those things back there with, like, the decisions that have to be made in these things, but it's very odd, right? It's very odd, and so I just had to cover it. Elite 99 Matt Riddle has made his way into the Top Talents wave, and the Elite 88 Rey Mysterio has found his self into the Top Talents wave, so it's very odd. It's a very odd situation, and we'll monitor it close here on the channel, and uh, I'll have to ask Mattel about this one, like why they made this decision and all these things. So we will see about that, but that is your Top Talents wave coming soon. You have Cody, Matt Riddle, and Rey Mysterio. We covered this for a few months now on the channel. We thought it was going to be Elites, and then we saw Basics and thought it was switched to Basics and thought it was Elites, and now it's back to Elites, so now it's just a whole kind 
kind of crazy situation. Also, not to mention, but the Cody Rhodes figure in the packaging looks significantly lighter and less saturated than it does out of the packaging. So maybe it's just a lighting issue, and depending on what kind of lighting you get is how the gear looks. Nonetheless, very interesting situation, man. But let's move it on up to WWE Elite Series 103, and this is in stock. All these figures I'm talking about today are in stock at Ringside Collectibles. Go use code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. All this stuff's in stock. You can go buy it right now. I don't know what's on back order, what's sold out, so you may want to go check on that. But we have yellow and black, Bobby Lashley, new head sculpt here. Pretty much just a repaint. I know we're getting a new head sculpt, but it's very similar to his last few Elites, right? We had the Elite 89 Bobby Lashley, then we had the Elite 95 Bobby Lashley, and then we had the top talents. And I want to say we had another Bobby Lashley somewhere in there. So we've seen our share of Bobby Lashley's very similar to this. Not like a, 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 just an awful figure, but it also comes with the United States Championship with the Bobby Lashley side plate, so that's a good one. And Bobby Lashley figures are always pretty damn good, man, so I can appreciate this Bobby Lashley. Moving on up, as soon as the Blue Universal Championship disappears from television, we get it at Ringside Collectibles, and it's going to be a minute before this thing hits retail, and we get the Roman Reigns side plate Blue Universal title, so I don't know how well that's going to do. I mean, people are going to buy it because it's Roman Reigns, and people want the championship anyway, regardless if it's on TV, but he's got a red gauntlet again, but we did point this out at WrestleMania at the Superstore for WrestleMania Access and WrestleMania 39 out in Los Angeles. He does come with the glove or gauntlet pointing up We The One's salute hand there. So that's cool. You do, you do get the mic holding weapon holding hand, you get the gloved fist hand, and you get the, uh, the, the gauntlet slash glove number one pointer finger hand, which is excellent. So that is good. At least you get that thrown in there, and they threw on the three-pack head sculpt. I'd really like to see some new head sculpts, which technically I guess this is new, but it's not that new. It's not, you know, the, the taper faded haircut that I want to see on a damn figure, man. They always gip out on that. Finn Balor can't get it. Roman Reigns can't get it. Freaking Kevin Owens can't get it. So hopefully one day I'll get my man bun faded Roman Reigns head sculpt in here. But I like this figure. It's just, you know, they, they got to plug Roman in there and it does come with the pointer finger. So, you know, you do get some newness going on with this figure. And he's doing it men on cards. So that's cool. Next up in this set, we do have the Street Profits, man. And these figures right here look so damn excellent. I mean, Montez Ford looks amazing. Angelo Dawkins looks amazing. Their jerseys look great. No Velcro on those things. A slew of accessories. These are going to be some of my favorite figures of the year. However, I do have to address the things that I don't like about the figure. I am going to fix them up on surgery. These guys are going to be day one surgery guys. We're going to get in there. We're going to see what we can figure out about these guys. However, they're not going to have lower shin cuts, so that sucks. And they don't have pegs in their legs, so I'm not going to be able to switch their lower legs with a John Cena or something like that to give them more articulation. The only thing I know to do is to switch out the shoes with something else, and we'll come, we'll, we'll figure that out on surgery again. We will address that on surgery. We'll get in the lab, and we'll figure that thing out, but it is worth noting that these figures look incredible. I love the Miami Vice Street Profit style uniforms. They got the Kobe for Montez. They got LeBron for Angelo Dawkins. That's right up my alleyway. You throw in the MDT style colorways with the Miami Vice. You mix in one of my favorite tag teams. You mix in my favorite gear probably they've ever worn. I mean, these are money, and not to mention, I know Angelo Dawkins is yelling, okay? We're gonna play around with that. We're gonna see if we can get maybe like his old figures. It's probably gonna be too big, but I still want to play around with it. But look at the torso on Angelo Dawkins, man. You're gonna tell me that that's not a perfect torso choice for Solo Sokoa? I feel like this is the torso they need to go with for Solo. I feel like that's the way to go. But nonetheless, they did give him a little bit bigger arms than I probably would have gave him. They're a little bit too jacked, but it's not the end of the world. This figure is significantly better than his first go around. His shorts don't look like they're 18 XL. His torso isn't Braun Strowman size. There's a lot of good things going on with this figure, so I am all for it. You guys know that. I love these Street Profits figures. I'm, I'm day one on these. These look incredible. I cannot wait to review these. Hopefully, these will arrive sometime next week, maybe Monday, and maybe the review can be up by Tuesday or Wednesday, man. I'm looking forward to these figures so damn much. These look incredible. But then we're moving on to Stardust, who is also a fantastic figure. This is a figure I've been waiting on for from Mattel for a very long time now. You have Stardust here, sleeveless attire, the Dusty Rhodes WrestleMania 32 ladder match, Intercontinental Championship, Dusty Rhodes polka dot attire with the polka dot ladder. This is beautiful. This is a figure I thought we would have got like five, six years ago, to be honest with you. But I'm glad we waited because we get the updated technology. We get the new Cody Rhodes figure here. This looks fantastic, man. I like the gauntlets. And not to mention, not only do you get this, you get the interchangeable Stardust hands, you get the ladder, and you get the Chase figure, which is in blue. And I want to say they did a basic of this, or they did like an, a Monsters figure of this, or like a similar like alien style character similar to this. But both of them look really damn toyetic and great. And I like that you have full sleeves on one, and then you have the sleeveless look on some. And I remember people fixing up their Elite 36 Cody Rhodes 
or Stardust figures back in the day, and they would crack the torso and put bare skin arms and gloved hands. I remember that like it was yesterday, and now we're getting official elites. I like the colors here. They look really fun. This is going to be great. I cannot wait to get these in here. Going to have to track down the chase for sure, but it is a trip getting some Stardust figures in here, man. And I, it's kind of funny because I remember back when one, Elite 103 was like on the rumor mill, and like, you know, we had the full list of figures listed out. I remember a lot of people telling me, they were like, oh, 103 is easily, I'm skipping the whole wave. I can finally save some money, but I don't know about that one no more, Brad. I feel like they've gotten a lot of bangers in this wave, so besides that, we do have Liv Morgan here, and Liv Morgan comes with a SmackDown Women's Championship with Liv Morgan's side plates, which is really cool. I do believe that's the first Women's Championship that comes with side plates, I think. I could be wrong about that, but I think that is true. She also has the Women's Money in the Bank contract, and she does have this cool black and green gear with the money sign on the pec, and the, this is a cool figure. It still has the basic boots, but I don't hate it. I feel like her head sculpt really doesn't look like Liv Morgan. Am I tripping? I just don't see Liv Morgan in this head sculpt. I still think the figure will pose around well and stuff, but I think I'm going to put the Elite 85 head sculpt on there or the pink hair basic on there. I just, I, I don't know. I'm just not really seeing Liv Morgan in this head sculpt. I think that it kind of, it, it has like kind of a, I don't even know. It, it's like you could say it's Liv Morgan and nobody's not going to like fight you on it, but at the same time, it's not like great likeness to Liv Morgan and uh, I think her Elite 85 figure was better in terms of likeness on the head sculpt. So I'm definitely going to be switching out the head sculpt. However, this figure is pretty cool as well. And then we also, wrapping up our Elite Series 103, we also have a look at some battle packs. Now, we saw these battle packs on display at WrestleMania. We have the Tennessee Titans Street Profits figures, which look really cool. I'm very interested to know if these head sculpts will go on their Elites. I don't think the Montez Ford head sculpt's that good. It doesn't really look like Montez Ford. And then you have the Angelo Dawkins, which is pretty much his Elite figure, but I wonder about the sizing and stuff like that. But these figures did look really good at WrestleMania. I wish these were Elites, because I think this gear is really awesome, and I think it's amazing they could even get this close to the Tennessee Titans logos and likeness and colors and everything like that without getting in trouble. So this looks good to me. I'm, I'm excited about this battle pack. I think if I see this at retail, I would grab it. I'm not going to, you know, er order it early or anything, but I still think that this is worth grabbing if I find it at retail. So we will see about that. Sometimes that's the way the cookie crumbles on battle packs. We also have the Cody Rhodes and Austin Theory battle pack, which is a bit odd. You know, you do get the United States Championship with the Austin Theory side plates, which is really cool. I think that is worth grabbing right there. Another one where I I am going to grab it if I see it at retail. I think the deco on the head sculpt for Cody looks good. Not the biggest fan of the Theory figure. However, you know, the Cody Rhodes figure. I think this is what the Cody Rhodes Elite is supposed to look like. These colors and what this looks like and everything like that. The head sculpt looks good, which is really the biggest point for me. And I will be grabbing this if I see this at retail. I think it's a solid battle pack. You know, you get the championship and everything like that. And then the last battle pack that we have here is Mankind and The Rock. This Mankind head sculpt looks crazy, bro. I love the bow tie attire and everything like that. But the head sculpt looks crazy. Like, this doesn't look like Mick Foley at all to me. It looks kind of funny how he's just making that, like, smirking face. It kind of looks like Jack Black or something, in my opinion. But it does come with the world title, which is cool. And it comes with this Rock figure that has a decent head sculpt as well. So, I don't know. I know it's trying to attract, like, you know, Attitude Era fans, stuff like that. But I, I don't know. That Mick Foley or Mankind head sculpt just looks funny to me. But uh, it is a unique look. I do like that they're stepping out of the box. They're going to, like, I like throwback, you know, battle packs and styles like that to kind of see, like, throwback figures and basic form is kind of interesting, but that head sculpt's really funny to me. And then the last figure that we have is going to be the Cody Rhodes in a suit. Now, this figure right here has a lot going on with it that we have to address. First of all, I do not like suited Mattel figures. You guys know this. I think their build figures are solid, and I think that their elites, just in general, are pretty solid when it comes to suited figures, but the basics are always trash. They're always way too thick. They're really stiff. The legs don't bend well. They can't stand that well. They're, like, very, like, I don't even know how to really set, like, Ken doll, kind of. Like, they're kind of just real stiff. And uh, you guys are also going to notice that on his neck, they actually put the tattoo in the correct spot this time. There is no tattoo on his jawline. The tattoo is actually accurate. It is not right up on his ear, so it is actually on down in the middle of his neck where it belongs. I've addressed this in many videos before. I think they nailed the placement of this. Now we just have to translate that into our elite figures, man. They need to lower the neck tattoo. It's not accurate where they put it. It's way too close to the ear hole. I've talked about this on the channel a lot, and I've even proven it with, with like images of the tattoo, man. It is not right up on his ear like that. It is There is a gap between his ear and this basic. Pretty much nails the location, but... This may be a figure that I grab at retail just because it is Cody. I love Cody. It is a suited Cody, whatever the case is. But I think an elite suited Cody is going to be much better. But whatever Mattel has to do, man, they have to slim these figures down. They have to make them more 
operational and poseable. Uh, I think Jazzwares has done it great in their suited figures. I think their suited bodies are great. And not that Mattel has never done a good suited body elite or anything like that. I just think that they struggle with the slim suited bodies like this Cody. And like if Finn Balor were to wear a suit, if they were to make a figure, his chest would be gigantic. Go back to the Corey Graves basic that we've talked about. Go back to the Seth Rollins basic with the blue suit. They're way too thick in the chest, man. They just look like they're about to explode out of their jacket. And it's not accurate. And I don't know if anybody else feels that way. I'd love to know what you think down in the comment section below. But that is the last figure that we have to cover. But I thought this was pretty good news. All this stuff's in stock. You can go grab it. I don't think the basic Cody's in stock. I could be wrong about that. I don't think they revealed any of that wave. But it shouldn't be too much longer. That's got the Rey Mysterio, the Randy Orton, the Ronda Rousey in that wave. I think Tommaso Ciampa's also in that wave. So if he revealed that, I'm sure Ringside Collectibles will be revealing it very soon. And they may have revealed it already, I guess. But we will have to see. I I don't think so, at least at the time of recording. I'll have to go back and look, but that is your top talents, your Elite 103, your Battle Packs. I'd love to know all of your thoughts on all of these figures down in the comment section below. Where do you stand on the on the suited figures and all that different stuff? Aesthetically, like, talking about the Cody Rhodes basic, I know it kind of went off on a tangent, but aesthetically, the figure looks okay. Like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna, like, it's not completely just, oh, this is the worst figure you've ever seen, but at the same time, like, if they really want to upgrade those figures, they need to be slimmer, man. They need to get a, a better look on those figures and bodies, and uh, I, I cannot be the only one that feels that. So we will have to see where that goes in the future. However, that's going to wrap this video up, man. Hope you guys did enjoy. I'd love to know what your thoughts are on these figures down in the comment section below. But before we get out of here, man, huge shout out to our patron army of the MDT YouTube channel. If you guys are interested in that, links in the description below, of course. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Always appreciate every single one of you. Use code MDTOYS over at Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at MyDamnToys. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll see you next time.